it going? Been a bit. Uh, been working on getting a new Ray team together and just taking a little bit of a break from my last videos, which were a lot of work getting the London stuff put together. But it was fun and it was awesome. But I want to start a new series and uh, I'll be sharing these with you over the next upcoming weeks. I have a new hobby. It's something I've been planning for years. Uh, and for those of you who, like me, who have collected various pieces of art over the years, you might be interested in this as well. I tend to collect unfinished art, art pieces without frames. It doesn't have to be oil art. It doesn't have to be anything like that. It can be prints. They're just fine. Or pictures. But I have them, and they're rolled up in little tubes, and they're kept in various places, but I've never got them framed because it's so dang expensive to frame art that i have it's always been prohibitive. Uh, just never seemed to want to spend that kind of money. So, I am going to teach myself how to frame art. And over the next few weeks, I will be sharing with you uh, videos on each stage and how I teach myself how to do that those various stages now over the last couple of months with every paycheck I've been buying one of the tools I need I will need to do this uh, for example I've purchased this mat cutter and uh, let's see oh uh, I have this miter saw now you may be thinking oh well, that's a really cheap looking miter saw. I actually have a, a miter saw in my uh, storage unit, but um, a, an electric one, uh, circular, but I can't really use that in my apartment. So what I did was I, I bought this inexpensive miter box for making the rough cuts, and then I bought this, uh, this sanding wheel you see here. And this is cool because you can actually, you can actually calibrate it to make sure it's sanding at a 45 degree angle and then you can just sand it to make sure you have it precisely at 45 degrees and precisely the length that you want it to be in order to to uh, make the frame. So I'll be cutting my mats, I'll be cutting my own molding stock and then I got this cool tool that is actually a, a, a frame joiner. So this is cool. Uh, you, of course, it's perfect 45 degree angles, and it pushes in the brads that connect the uh, pieces together. And you, after you join all four corners, you have a perfect picture frame. And then I'll be probably putting very uh, finely clear acrylic or plexiglass as the front. I don't want to get into glass cutting, uh, but uh, we'll cut plexiglass. We will layer the the mats and we will uh, cut and sand the frame section, and we will join the frames and we will put it all together along with the finishing parts, which includes the dust, ba dust backing and other things like that. So we're gonna, we're gonna top to bottom professionally frame our, our art and uh, we're gonna have fun doing it. So, uh, you know, not only are we gonna do art pieces, we're gonna, all my diplomas are in Walmart standard 8 by 11 uh, you know the cheapest possible frames I graduated decades ago from college I've always had it in these cheap frames so I'm gonna put some nice frames together for him and like I said I have a lot of art that I want to hang and we'll, we'll uh, do that and uh, you know we'll just learn a new a new skill set and who knows I mean when you have all the tools and the time and you can basically do it for just the materials you know, after a while, you will see a return on, on investment. I've probably invested about $500 in the tools. And uh, I'll, I'll give you the details on each one as we cover it. But, uh, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if you're talking custom framing with, with layered matting and all of that, three pictures, you'll rack up $500 easy. So I, I figure that's my break-even point. When I have done three pictures, I will have broken even. And after that, it's all gravy. And to be honest, that might be an interesting post-career uh, moneymaker for me. There's not a lot of 
heavy lifting involved. There's a certain amount of creativity, craftsmanship of things I appreciate a lot. And when I retire, you know, if I want to make some extra money, I could do some custom framing. Who knows? So, uh, you know, we're going to check it out. We're going to have some fun with it. We're going to learn a new skill and uh, have something to show for it at the end. So uh, oftentimes hobbies can be money sinks. Uh, I will pretty much have spent most of the money I'm going to spend on it other than the materials for matting and molding and plexiglass. And there's cost there. But uh, a lot of hobbies are money sinks. This one will actually be a money saver over time and could be a money maker as well. And if you can have a hobby that's fun and you're making money at it, I mean, what the, what the hell? Uh, it, it sounds like a perfect hobby. So that's what we're going to do. And we'll, as I said, make a series as we learn each step. And uh, I'll share that with you. And uh, this will be what's happening going forward. I'm waiting on my last few pieces of tools to come in and then I'll be ready to start. I already got my first new project lined up. It's going to be a picture that I got uh, in London at St. Paul's uh, Cathedral. And uh, we'll, we'll put that together and, and we'll see how it goes. So come along and join me on this new little uh, cool ride and see how it goes. All right. We'll check you later.